We've completed our all-decade team for the Minnesota Vikings. Now let's have some fun with our lightning round. I'm going to ask each of you guys to give us your favorite player not on your team. I'm going to start. I'm going to go with Teddy Bridgewater. I just think this guy's charismatic smile, what he had to overcome, uh, just the way he lit up this team, and, and just everything about Teddy Bridgewater said uh, success, and you root for the guy all the time. So I'll, I'll go with Teddy, Paul. Well, uh, Teddy would have been, uh, Teddy for me is the answer. I'll go outside of the box um, because I had Everson Griffin and Jared Allen as the yeah. defensive ends. I'll go with Daniil Hunter, um, and he's unbelievable. And when we do this um, in 10 years, he'll be a cinch <laughs> at one of the ends. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin? Well, as a reporter, I'm going to break uh, uh, a like stride this. here and go Brett Favre. The amount of stories, first of all, that he gave oh, us, uh, yeah. let alone. And yeah. I know 2010 wasn't the best year on the field. But uh, not only did it raise the level of energy, I think, around the building and around the right, city, especially right. that year when they had to send half the team down to Mississippi <laughs> to get them. <laughs> to go get them. But, uh, but also, like, I can look back just very selfishly and say I got to see one of the best players in the history yeah. of the game for his last Even couple seasons. Even if it seasons. didn't end well in 2010, right. it was still amazing to watch it here happen. And, and Pete, I mean, it was just, uh, uh, the circus was here in 2009. and It was unbelievable. It really was. Never seen anything else. like it. I, yeah. the, the guy that I had, don't have on my list that, I'd lo that I my favorite is Brian Robison and I like Brian because of his he spent his career here as a Minnesota Viking I saw him come in you know straight out of Texas and then he for a while he's got cornrows and then he all you see him grow <laughs> yeah. up and develop into uh you know into a, a great young man and right. and I think um, unfortunately for him on this list he had a lot of really unbelievable players in front of him yeah. but he was always there he was always in the mix and he was very very solid and and one of the, I think one of the greatest Viking careers uh, in the last uh, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Next question for you, uh, gentlemen. The most interesting Viking storylines of the decade on or off the field? I mean, I, I would go back to the 2010 season. Wow. I mean, Favre's last year, second last year, all well, that went on. Uh, Chile got fired, the Randy Moss experiment, the dome collapse, I mean, all the stuff that happened in 2010. It wasn't. Uh, it was a storyline that just have kept writing itself over and over again. Paul, so what? What was one of your? Well, favorites? I mean, you know, I know that it's it's kind of a running joke. Hey, did you hear Adam Thielen is from Detroit Lakes and he played <laughs> for uh, the Mankato Mavericks? I get that. Yeah. For me, it's number one. I mean, seriously, remembering Adam at rookie camp tryout just to get into the rookie camp and then winning his way to special teams. What he did at the College Stadium against Carolina. He catches his first touchdown final game of a season at TCF Bank Stadium. He wants to throw the ball in the stands to his family. Kyle Fuller comes running from behind, tips it away, and, and Adam never got it. You know, so just all these these stories associated with Adam uh, from where he comes to where he is, that that's my story, man. Yeah, on and off the field, really. Yeah. Absolutely. Kevin? To me, uh, from a big picture, it's this franchise's very aggressive search for a quarterback. Uh, three first-round picks when you include the Sam Bradford thing, uh, the richest contract in, right. from a guaranteed standpoint, NFL history for Kirk Cousins. And we get to the end of the decade, and, and we think that they have found the answer, yeah. but we don't know because Cousins only has one more year. Right. And so you look at some of the other teams just in this division. When the decade started, Matthew Stafford was the quarterback in Detroit. Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback yeah. in Green mm -hmm. Bay. Chicago has been up yeah. and down. But right. there's, some, there's many franchises that started the decade uh, with the same guy that they ended it with. And the Vikings, you know, to their credit, haven't just thrown up their hands that we can't work. They keep looking hard and they yeah, keep they spending assets. Yeah. Um, but that's been... Big Pretty assets. much the, the big storyline yeah. on the field for them over the decade. And to Kevin's point, it got so desperate at one point earlier in the decade, they dusted off Donovan McNabb. How about Josh Freeman? I thought you were going to say Josh <laughs> Freeman. Right. Well, the first, was yeah. that first, I've obliterated that from my yeah. football memory, that, that well, Monday night football game no, in New Jersey. Beauty. McNabb was one in five. Yeah, I mean, if you want to look at quarterback woes, you just need to go about 500 miles east to <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest story of this franchise over the decade is what we're sitting in. Yeah. I think the what the Wilfs have done to build a new stadium, something that I, when I played and coached with Red McCombs, I just didn't think it could get done. There's too much red tape. There's too much. It's just not not everybody was unified in the city, well, but to bring the city to together <laughs> yeah. and to get that stadium built. And then on top of it, to make this investment, right. uh, there's no question anyone who comes out and visits as a free agent, as a reporter, mm -hmm. as a member of the of the league in New York, 
to see what they have done here to know that this franchise, it's putting its best leg first mm -hmm. and that the ownership is committed to having a winner here. You don't have to look any further than what they've invested in this town and this Great community point. and in, in these buildings. And just to add to that, for, you know, there were many years where people said all oh, the, you know, belly aching for a stadium was just, uh, you know, there's no... You know, there's no, there shouldn't be any pressure because there's not, they're not going anywhere. Ask the people in San Diego, right. ask the people in St. Louis, ask the people in Oakland. Right. Right. Had what you said not happened, and Jack's had yep. the stadium yep. not happened, then they good chance gone. this we're not yeah. sitting here right now. So, yeah. um, you know, I think it, I think it's you, you never know how it's going to turn out to the end, but when you look back and you see, you know, what happened after the Vikings got the stadium in other cities, I think people should realize there was more urgency than they might have known. It's just yeah. to start a decade playing at the Dome, it collapsing in I 2010, know, I thought about that. and then finishing it in the building that they are yeah. and practicing it's here. It's just unbelievable. So let's uh, move on to our favorite teams, seasons to cover. Uh, I mean, I look at uh, 13 and 3 in 2017. Uh, your call, uh, Minneapolis Miracle. It just stands out so much because it was the most inexplicable success a Vikings team has ever kind of had at the at the moment where you think it's the rugs are going to be pulled out from under them again, Paul. Well, 2017 it was unbelievable. 09 all time is, is professionally my favorite, and 2019 had good memories too. I'm going to go outside of the box here. Okay. Um, 2012, and, and here's why. And now, granted, Christian Ponder was the quarterback. It wasn't working out that well. Former offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave made one of the great decisions in my 18 years of calling games for this team, where he basically said, I don't care if there are 10 men in the box uh, next to the line. I'm running, Adrian, because that's my best hope. And he made that decision. Adrian became MVP. And also, there was a win and in game at Metrodome at the end of the season to beat Green Bay to get in, and they won it. And it was really kind of as loud as I've heard that building outside of playoff games. So 2012, the defense took off at the end of the season. That's an underrated, wonderful finish to a season. It really was. Kevin, what stands out to you? To me, it's 2017, and because of the Minneapolis miracle, and I remember thinking it like that night and continuing to think it thereafter. I grew up watching all these NFL films of like these great plays and you know things that went. I became iconic: the Holy Roller, the sure. you know the uh, uh, all different kinds of plays, and this is one of them. You know, like the next generation will be watching those videos, and this, and I got to sit there and and see it. Maybe that that's just a recency or close, you know, bias to it. But uh, to me, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Jaws were on the floor when it happened. Right, and it ended up being a top 100 play in the history of the NFL. Yeah. So, you know, and, and one play doesn't define a season, but I think that whole year with Case Keenum and Paul, you mentioned it earlier, how that season started and how we just, it just was one thing after another and how that team turned itself around, marched its way into the playoffs. And I'll never forget on that last drive, thinking to myself, when this is over, I'll have about 30 seconds to sum up mm. how a team had that unbelievable season and now we're out of it. Mm. And then like that, right. Brian Robinson, I'm gonna retire at the end of the season. He's yeah. sitting on the bench watching this last offensive drive thinking, man, looking around, this is it, it's over. And then one play later, he has yet one more game to play. So, well, Rosie, in 2017, that was awesome. they're two and two. They lose to Alvin Cook for right. the season. Right. And they had a game that year against the Rams where Gurley marched down the field and the Rams went down the field, just sliced through it with this McVay offense. And holy cow, what is this? They didn't score the final 55 minutes of the game. And it was uh, Anthony Harris with a play on Cooper Cup at the goal line. And again, U.S. Bank Stadium just being as loud as it was, 2017 was unbelievable. Predictions for the next decade. This is uh, looking your crystal ball here. I mean, there's a lot of a lot to, to digest here, from coaching to quarterbacks to everything else that goes along with it. Pete, anything that comes to mind? I think one thing that was obvious looking at this list and looking at the last decade was the offensive line. Just a lack of stability and the lack of great playmakers. Now, I do think Brian O'Neill is positioned to become a very, very good right tackle. I think we might have our center position figured out for maybe the next five or 10 years. I think um, Daniil Hunter, I think, is going to continue to be an amazing player for this team, for this franchise. So uh, I, I, I like what you have in a few, you know, in that handful of, of, of players who I think are going to continue to excel and continue to be marquee players in the league for the next five years. Yeah. Kevin? 
I think I, you know, I'll go back to it and I'll say that I think quarterback stability is still going to be a big story for this franchise. You know, maybe they've turned a corner with Kirk. Um, there's going to have to be a lot more assets uh, devoted to him in order to make that happen. You know, he's only got the one year left contract wise. Um, if it doesn't, then they need to, to start over again. Uh, and so that is something to consider as well. You know, maybe they have gotten to that point, but like every, if you look at, if, at Super Bowl winners, you know, there's not this churn at quarterback. Right, right. And so that's really, to me, the last, the last step there. For and Paul, the Will family loves stability. Speaking of stability, uh, Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman have been a team for quite a while. You look at them going, a lot of owners go, I've had enough. We're going to move on right here. My prediction is they're going to give them more time to kind of figure this out. Do you feel that way? And what do you? Yeah, I do. And, and I th certainly think it's worthy on many levels. Now, I'm going to, you know, with the next decade, it's just like with Irv Smith Jr. and Mike Hughes and Brian O'Neill and Garrett Bradbury and some players who I think can be prominent the next 10 years. Um, I'm going to get newsy on it, like Kevin from ESPN and ESPN.com. I think the, the schedule change that is coming at us with fewer preseason games, more regular season games or game, and more playoff teams. When we do this again, I think that's going to be the A topic for the decade we just saw. I think that's what is being discussed right now, if, uh, the, if the players want to get anything out of the owners, and then also uh, 14 teams in the playoffs as opposed to 12. Yeah. Are we going to see a team in Europe? I think we're going to see a virtual team. I think right. at some point there will be... <laughs> what do you mean? There will be, uh, they will have eight games in London, but yeah. it won't be the oh. same team. Uh, in other words, you know, you'll just be, they'll be running, more teams will be going out there for games, but there won't yeah. be the same team. Because it's just, in terms of just logistics right now, unless they get the Concord well, it's plane. Written, in the current CBA, it's written they cannot have a team in Europe. So with yeah. the new CBA. Right, right. It, they could leave they, that open, but I think the more, what I've always been told is that the more logical thing is just to have eight games out there and, and you know, it could be a, a rotation of two or three teams that, that do it, that are the home teams, but that would be more realistic than actually basing a franchise there. My prediction is Paul Allen will crush at the tables when the Vikings end up playing in <laughs> Vegas. That's all I know, and eventually that yeah. happens against the Vegas Raiders. And, and you know what? Honestly, on a team website um, in the NFL, there's nothing better than a gambling reference. So <laughs> thank you very much for well, that. I want to thank Paul Allen, Kevin Seifert, Pete Bursich. Thank you for listening to our all-Vikings decade team. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching the Vikings All-Decade Team, brought to you by Northland Ford Dealers and United Health Group.